All right, today we're going to be taking a look at um, how to uh, find some inverse trig functions um, and doing this without the use of a calculator. Um, something that probably needs to be said before we start this, um, since we're going to be working with our inverse trig functions, uh, you need to make sure that that original function is one-to-one -one and that it actually has an inverse. All right, and there's a lot to it, and I could go into a lot with graphs and showing you all that kind of stuff, but... Uh, basically, in order to ensure those two things, that you've got the original function being one-to-one -one and it has an inverse, all right, we're going to place restrictions on our sine, cosine, and tangent graphs, and then that way that's going to ensure that this will happen. All right, so this first diagram here shows what the restrictions will be for our sine and tangent restrictions. All right. When we use our unit circle, we are going to use a unit circle to find our inverse trig functions. All right. When we're working with sine and tangent, our restriction is going to be uh, theta has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. All right. So what that does is it puts me in the first and the fourth quadrant. So every one of our answers will come from either the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant whenever you're trying to find the inverse um, trig functions of sine and tangent. All right. Your cosine restriction, all right, theta is going to have to be between 0 and pi, all right, so unit circle 0, pi, all right, anything in between there will put me in quadrants 1 and 2. So when I'm doing um, inverse cosine functions, I'm going to look on my unit circle in quadrants 1 and 2 for those answers, okay? All right, so um, I have a unit circle here, um, which might be a little bit small, but if you've got your unit circle, it's going to be the same, all right, that you can look at. All right, now um, I've got three examples set up here that we're going to do. All right, basically it wants you to find the exact value. You are not going to be using a calculator, okay? You're going to just use your unit circle, and all of your answers will be in radians, all right? So, for instance, on this first one, all right, I've got the inverse sine, of radical 2 over 2. All right. Now, which means this is the answer, and I'm trying to find my theta. I'm trying to do the inverse. I'm trying to find the angle. All right. So you might think of writing it as the sine of some theta, which I don't know what it is, is going to be equal to the square root of 2 over 2. Okay. Now, my sine restriction said that sine has to be in either the first or the fourth quadrant. So when I come over here to my unit circle, these are the only two places that I am going to look for the square root of 2 over 2. All right, and if you remember, um, in an ordered pair, I even have it up here on the corner of my unit circle, the uh, x-coordinate is cosine, the y-coordinate is sine. So I'm going to look at every one of my y-coordinates in those ordered pairs until I find radical 2 over 2. All right, I find radical 2 over 2 right here in the first quadrant, and it is, the angle is pi over 4. All right, so in this first example, theta is pi over 4. Okay, final answer. Okay, now let's do the inverse of cosine, um, negative square root of 3 over 2. All right, now, if you remember what I had said about the restriction on cosine, the restriction on cosine, you have to look in quadrants 1 and 2. All right, which means I'm just going to be looking up here in these two quadrants. All right, I'm looking for negative square root of 3 over 2. All right, because here again, I want to find the angle. So you might think of it as cosine of some angle theta is going to be equal to negative square root of 3 over 2. All right, now recalling each one of those ordered pairs along your unit circle, the first coordinate is going to be your cosine. So I'm going to look at every first coordinate in each one of those ordered pairs until I find a negative square root of 3 over 2, and I find it right here in the second quadrant, okay? That makes my theta 5 pi over 6. So theta is 5 pi over 6, okay? Um, my last example is a tangent, inverse tangent of the square root of 3, all right? And tangent has the exact same restrictions as sine, all right, so that means I'm back to looking just in the first and fourth quadrants. All right, now, um, on my unit circles, I always put the tangent values on my unit circle. All right, so if you haven't done that, that might be a, a good thing to do. Um, but if you recall, tangent is just your sine divided by cosine. So you could do that. You take the y divided by the x, and you get square root of 3 on that first one. 
Radical 2 over 2 divided by radical 2 over 2 gives you 1. All right, and I just have already done that and wrote that on my unit circle makes it a whole lot easier. So I'm going to be looking in the first and fourth quadrants for square root of 3. All right, positive square root of 3, and it's right here, which is pi over 3. Okay, so again, I was looking for the tangent of some theta equaling the square root of 3, and it turns out that theta is pi over 3. All right, so um, just doing sine, cosine, tangent, inverses of those three, and using your unit circle, no um, calculator involved here, and you can get all of your rating measures right off your unit circle. All right, um, I think I will go ahead and zoom in, and you could hit pause if you need to on your video. If you do not have the tangent values on your unit circle, um, it might be worth to go ahead and add those on there. So um, go ahead and uh, give me a like if you like the video, and be sure and share with your friends. Thanks.